Welcome back to my channel and you join me in Suyog at 6.30 a.m. at Treasure Park starting off our bike ride to Ratnagiri. There were going to be a few more people on the ride initially but there was a lot of chickening out last minute from a lot of people so just us for this ride. Anyhow making the ride happen was more important than waiting weeks for people to get freed up which may not have happened at all. My budget action camera doesn't really perform well in low light hence the mad amounts of noise you can see here. This was also the first ride I did with my Solus VersaDry all weather gloves and they worked great. Full review of those coming soon although you can see the purchase vlog right now which I'll link up here and down in the description. As soon as the surroundings started to light up a bit we found ourselves on the highway. This was the part of the journey where we could really make some serious progress since it's easy to hold triple digit speeds here for long periods of time. Even though it was peak monsoon there was no rain at this particular moment so the good visibility coupled with dry roads meant we were covering ground fast. Point to be noted here the NS200 is a lot more comfortable at the top end of the engine spectrum and can also reach and maintain higher speeds more comfortably as compared to the Yamaha MT15. The power difference between both bikes becomes extremely evident on the highway. The MT isn't bad at all it actually performs incredibly well for a 155cc machine but it cannot compete with the NS200's high speed performance and overall stability. Khambat Ki Ghat is a ghat I've been to a couple of times before this and I always always enjoy it here. The dry roads meant we could really hit the twisties with a lot of confidence. The MT15 with its lighter weight and shorter wheelbase excelled at cornering and was also quicker and more eager to dart rapidly out of the bends. Here the MT nudges past the NS in terms of agility and handling. It's really a very well put together machine. We were both quite hungry after a while so we stopped off near Satara for breakfast. We'd covered a decent amount of distance at this point and we were really very pleased with ourselves. My massive tail bag hadn't moved an inch since we left and I was glad the straps and bungee cords were holding up well. I'd used my new luggage rack and saddle stays for lots of useful luggage rope mounting points. For a reference of what luggage we were using I was using the old 50 liter expandable Rhinox Storm proof tail bag and Suyog was using the smaller but newer 42 liter Rhinox Expedition trail bag too. Rhinox stock bag straps aren't always great they always get a little loose over the course of the ride regardless of how well you tighten them which happened to Suyog's bag but not mine since I'd used three extra bungee cords which ironically I'd actually borrowed from Suyog himself. Because of the MT15 small back seat there's less room on the back for luggage as well and larger bags like the one I was using don't fit very well on that bike. We set off again and hit the highway section. A while later we reached the Ambagat part of the journey which rewarded us with a departure from the dominant straightness of the highway and gifted us gorgeous twisting bends where progress was slowed down but the fun quotient was absolutely outstanding. There were still a few straight patches but the variety in the road was most welcome. At this point I was questioning why I'd loaded up so much on the waterproofing apparel since it hadn't rained a drop since we'd left and I was really hoping we'd get some rain since I really enjoyed riding my bike in it. Our last year's Alibag monsoon ride was epic even though it was only about half the distance of this one.
As if my prayers had been heard, the rain began and it was here to stay. However, since it had been a few hours since our breakfast break, we stopped to have some tea and discussed how our bikes felt so far. We both had one main issue with our bikes from a touring point of view. The NS200's handlebar is set up in quite a sporty way which lends a gentle lean forwards in terms of posture. This isn't such a problem on small rides, but after hundreds, two hundreds of kilometers, it can get tedious and the lower back can start hurting a bit. The MT-15's main issue is the rider's seat. It's very compact, doesn't have any wiggle room and the foam is extremely hard which is cruel on your butt. These are both solvable problems which me and Suyog are going to rectify with some much needed touring mods fairly soon. We started riding in the rain and boy was it fun. My rain gear really came into its own here and the thumb mounted wiper on the Solus Versa dry gloves worked like magic. I took it easy in the wet since I didn't want any slip and fall mishaps but as the road went on I really developed a good amount of confidence in the bends and was able to get my speed up in the twisties even in the wet during continuous downpour. The TBS Eurogrips did not let me down here. I didn't get all parts of the ride on cam since I was using an on off strategy to conserve its tiny battery pack. Suyok didn't get as much cornering confidence in the wet from his Yamaha, not sure if that was him or the bike or both, but the point is that we both enjoyed riding in the rain at our own comfortable pace. A little later a mountainous pass opened up into one of the most beautiful on-route locations I've ever come across on a bike ride. These pictures really don't do this place justice, it looked like absolute heaven. There was a massive deep valley to our left bathed in dense vegetation with thick fog and clouds spilling all over it. It was absolutely breathtaking and we had to stop to admire the beauty of this place. After this more rain riding took place and a while later we entered Ratnagiri although unfortunately my action cam battery had died by this stage. We reached New Kokon Homestay which is where we were staying and wanted some comfort food because we were wet and tired so we ordered burgers from a nearby local joint which were decent and did the job. Then we took a nap before heading out.
चिकन आहे मी धरणार नाही आहे फुल वेळ खाली हो मी चिकन आहे That night the fish spree began as we went out and had an awesome authentic fish thali. I had prawns but Suyog wasn't in the mood for fish for whatever reason so he had eggs. The food was great but it wasn't much cheaper than fish in Pune which I was expecting it to be since right now we were practically next to the sea. Okay so we woke up and we've got our tea here in the room but the problem is this this guy right here can do can you come here it's it, against the light I have a very bad mm-hmm. camera. Okay it's still very bad hang on. Okay yeah. It's a very particular kind of tea. Like I don't really care what kind. Tea is tea for me, but like on the highway, the tea we got had very little tea and a lot of milk in it, and I don't mind. But he's very bothered by it. So now we are on the search. We are on the search somewhere in the horizon for a cup of tea that he likes. So yeah, look forward to that. <laughs> The next day we went to Ganpati Pure visited the mandir the beach and then ate more fish Bhayanak baap ho I'll give you a tour of our living accommodation now and fill you in about some stuff that happened that we didn't get on camera. New Kokan was a decent place to stay. It was cheap as hell. 1000 rupees per night for the bare bones non-AC room which translated to 500 rupees per person for us. The rooms were down a flight of stairs and there was one bathroom between two rooms, but since there wasn't anyone in the room next to ours that didn't really bother us too much. The pillows were atrocious though and they actually gave me a neck sprain which I had to take painkillers for for the ride back to Pune and it still hurt like hell. A night earlier we'd met my college friend Rugved and we'd also ventured into some ridiculously muddy and rocky gully where after a few minutes of tragic slipping and wheel spin with Rugved as pillion my bike slipped and I fell. The speed was very low so me and Rugved were uninjured but my bike shifter snapped backwards 90 degrees locked in third gear my knuckle guard came off and the crash guard bent backwards more details about how my saddle stays and crash guard saved the rest of my bike are in my saddle stay installation and review video which i'll link up here and down in the description so yeah i had to ride my bike out of the mud and 10 kilometers through the dark to a mechanic only in third gear the mechanic was extremely kind and helpful and got my bike working again Another thing we noticed in the dark was that my pulsar's headlight was absolutely useless. My auxiliaries made things a bit better but not by much. The MT15's LED projector headlamp was the only shot we had at actually seeing anything at night. The next day I actually got food poisoning from eating too much fish the past 3 days. Vomited like a maniac and the only reason I got better was because my parents knew a doctor in Ratnagiri who prescribed me medicines over the phone and got me back in okay shape for the 300 km ride back home the next day. I was very weak though. That's the main reason I'm walking so slowly in this video. The bike parking was super scenic in a new Kokan homestay because because of that whenever we came back from somewhere or we were leaving to go somewhere within ratnagiri it just made everything a lot more scenic because of how amazing the parking was it was elevated and overlooked a lot of ratnagiri and made the whole experience very pleasant our bikes overall performed incredible throughout and we were both happy with the ride it was a little too eventful for me though could have done with few mishaps for sure Also the reason I don't have footage of quite a few things is because on the way back Suyog's phone flew off his phone mount and got smashed on the road beyond repair and that had a lot of good content on it. Overall a very memorable ride and we got home just before the catastrophic rain started in Ratnagiri. Monsoon rides are always memorable. Ride safe. <laughs>